Hey guys, welcome back to Live Your Style. I'm Shara and today we're doing something that has needed to be done for kind of a long time. Tyler and I have not had a coffee table since we got married and we really, really, really needed one. I've been looking for some good deals like at West Elm and Crate and Barrel, but everything is like north of $300 and we don't want to spend that much. So I did what I always do and I found a way to make it for less. I'm happy to say that this project is about a hundred bucks, maybe $102 or something, but it is a lot less than 300 and it's a bargain steal of a deal for a coffee table. So I hope that you guys love this project. If you would like to see how I'm going to do it, hit that subscribe button and let's jump into the video. Okay, first things first, it's really important that you measure the space that the table's going. It will dictate how you cut your wood. If you are like us, we were literally laying out pieces of wood and staging an aisle of Home Depot. So don't do that. That way you can actually measure it out and you know the centimeters and the cut sizes and that way they're really nice to you at Home Depot and help you cut all of your wood. So we decided the perfect size coffee table for our house was 55 by 28. Again, could be different for you. But, because numbers get really confusing when you're just spewing them out on a video, all the details on how to save money when you're buying wood and measurements and all that kind of stuff is on the blog post, the newly designed blog website that I have. It's liveyourstyle.com. I will put it in a link below and you guys can actually find more details on each of these steps, but also you guys will be able to find the products that I used if you want to order them online or go into a store to get them. Okay, here's what you're gonna need three one by 10 pieces of wood, three one by six pieces of wood, four one by twos in two separate sizes, four hairpin legs, about 16 to 18 inches high, a drill, drill bit, and one and one fourth by eight inch screws. Also, you're probably gonna need a tape measure. For the finish, I used 220 to 150 grit sandpaper, some cleaning rags, a foam brush, some wood finish in dark walnut, and polyurethane clear satin sealer. Oh, and I would recommend using some gloves, that way you do not ruin your manicure. Okay, let's get started. Step number two, time to sand. And look, mine have polka dots. So I basically just used my sandpaper to sand until the wood was smooth and splinterless. Also, I know that this is supposed to be used on an electric sander. I happen to have an electric sander. You do not need to use one. Scout, quite on set. You don't have to use an electric sander, but if you have one on hand, it's handy. So I'm gonna use it. Okay, so now that we've sanded everything and it's perfectly smooth, um, I am just laid out my 1x10s here just so I can decide which grain, you know, if you like to see the actual knots in the wood, pick the top side and then we're going to build the table upside down. So then you flip those pieces over, like this, and line them up so that the edges are in line. Okay, so now step number four, now that we've lined everything up, I'm going to use my one by twos and actually build a frame around the table. So you line it up here on the outside and then using your drill bit, I'm gonna pre-drill holes into these one by twos that go straight into the one by tens. So many numbers, so little time. Um, I would recommend doing two holes per piece of wood here. That way you really reinforce and frame the table. Um, I'm starting with these two sides and then I'm going to do the uh, other two sides that are longer after. Okay, step number five, we are going to reinforce the middle. So I'm starting with that one by six board that we have right in the middle. I'm gonna put four holes into the center board and then I'm gonna put two holes on either of the side boards. 
Now I'm going to drill in the screws. Okay, moving on to step number six. We are now going to reinforce the ends. I'm going to put four pre-drilled holes into this middle panel here, um, and then the legs are going to be added, and that's going to reinforce the ends. Ready? Let's do it. So now I'm going to line up the legs. And you're going to line it up on this inside panel, not out here, but on the inside here. Use a marker and mark the very center so you know where to make your holes. Take them off, drill your holes. Okay, now I'm going to drill, add the legs, flip it over, and we're ready to stand. First, I wiped off all the excess dust with a clean cloth. Then I used my foam brush to stain the wood, letting it sit for about 20 minutes before I used another clean cloth to sop up the excess stain. Using the stain in the color Dark Walnut, I did about two coats. Step number eight, seal it. Once the stain cured for about 24 hours, I then applied the polyurethane to seal the color and protect the finish. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys absolutely love today's DIY. We honestly are loving this coffee table. I know Tyler feels like it's changed his life. So if you guys are gonna actually make this table, be sure to check out the blog post because I put a lot of extra details about the numbers and dimensions and just a lot of helpful tips that we discovered along the way that just did not make it into this video. I'll put the link below and you guys can check that out. And if you guys like this DIY, give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment below. And if you haven't subscribed, we love subscribers, join the family, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next week. Bye guys. Keep buying!